I'm Madhu Sharma and this is Design Mind. Every episode, we teach your mind about design by analysing a website. In this episode, we are looking at wearemammoth.com. A consulting firm based in Chicago, the We Are Mammoth site has several interesting design ideas. Let's start with the home page. As we can see, the user is welcomed with a bold image of an office that has this introduction text box floating on top. This floating technique is used throughout the site as we will see, and it is a good way of quickly orientating the user, as it clearly explains what each page is about. Because a lot of the topics discussed on wearemammoth.com are abstract, it can get away with obscuring the image with text. In this particular case though, we can see enough of the office photo to form an association between We Are Mammoth and modern high-tech offices. As we scroll down, we can see that this floating technique is continued. Except, as the site is now selling its products, it changes the technique by no longer obscuring the images. Again, like the home page at the start, each of these boxes provide bite-size at-a-glance information, which is brilliant as with just a few simple scrolls, the user can quickly learn about all the products and services the site has to offer. Let's look at the About page. The About page continues the style of the Home page, using a large image to instantly convey the concepts of the page. Scroll down and it shows a timeline of all the products We Are Mammoth has worked on. This is a really clever idea, as it instantly conveys a sense of history and authority. Putting the photos of when the staff members joined lets the user see how much the company has grown and developed. Let's look at the consulting page. This again starts off with a large image that has the floating text box. The actual text content is brilliantly laid out. It uses very simple techniques such as bold headings and these very subtle lines to break up information. Let's look at the blog page. The blog page does away with the larger images and instead uses larger headings. It would have probably been too difficult or too time consuming to find an image for each post. So using large headings in this way is a great technique for attracting attention. And as the headings are nice and short, the large font size makes it easier for users to pick out keywords that interest them. As you can see on this page, there's large columns of space in the margin and this helps to bring balance to the page and stops the headings from being too overpowering. It also ensures the text isn't too wide, creating a comfortable reading length. The blog page does, however, have a few problems. While I like the large sized headings, I think using a large font for the subheadings doesn't work as well, as it makes the subheadings attract too much attention. Also, I think using orange as a hover colour for the headings also is a bit problematic, as it seems a bit overpowering, as it's quite a sharp contrast from the monochromatic colour scheme. However, it does work fine for the smaller inline links. Moving on to other areas of the site, one great touch is the use of signposting that appears at the bottom of every page, such as this about link, and then this consulting link, and then this blog link. This signposting makes it easy for the user to quickly jump to the next page without having to scroll back up to the top. It does, however, suffer from being a bit too small on the page, and so easy to miss. In addition to the blog issues we identified earlier, the site as a whole does have a few other problems. For example, when initially visiting the website, it's not immediately clear what We Are Mammoth offers. This could have easily been solved by placing a slogan in the header. Also, as beautiful as the homepage is, it looks more like a portfolio for design agency rather than a company that makes and sells a variety of products. It took me a while to work out that We Are Mammoth actually has products that it sells. The mixed messages this gives off can be a bit jarring. Some of the photographic choices on the website are a bit questionable as well. Take this photo. Most of the guys seem bored, while the guy in red seems particularly annoyed. Only the women seem to be listening to what the speaker has to say. It might seem like a minor thing, but sending the wrong message with a photo could turn away potential customers. Another issue with the site is that the navigation links don't match up with the headings used on each page. For example, the about link comes to this page, but the heading says a better workplace starts with us. 
The consulting link comes to this page, but the heading says big and complex meets small and mighty. Again, this is a minor criticism, but it can be a bit jarring when you click on a link that has one title and the heading of a page has another title. It doesn't help that the colour used for the active link is only a little bit darker than the regular links, so it can be a bit difficult to tell which page you're on. Again, this is only a minor criticism, but it would have been nice if they had perhaps retitled the links. Moving back to the positives, one thing I really like about the site is how well it looks on mobile. The design compresses nicely to smaller screens and it's very easy for mobile users to just scroll through the page and get all the information they need. Overall, wearemammoth.com is a great example of a bold and clean website which users can quickly understand at a glance. The devices such as the timeline on the about page are especially good and it lets the site develop a sense of history and authority. That's it for this episode of Design Mind. A new episode is released every Tuesday and Thursday. Find us on the web at designmind.info. Our YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash designmindinfo. You can also find us on iTunes. We'd love it if you could leave us a review at any of these places. Until next time, happy designing.